Here's your cup, Lord. Oh, bring a shovel if you have. Yeah. Bring Great. a shovel if you have that. Okay, there's sign up sheets in the back for scripture reader, gathering prayer, and children's home at volunteers. Um, it's not a difficult task to read from the scripture, so if you are a good reader, if, you, if you're called to serve in that way, it doesn't even matter what kind of reader you are, whether you like to talk in front of people or whatever, please sign up. We need volunteers, and you do not want to see the same people over and over in rotation, so we like to see some people. Um, he needs to know, oh, sorry, he needs to know uh, by the 17th of July to procure tickets ahead of time. Yes. If, if they are late past that date for some reason, they can, can they go out on their own and just yes, be? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then there's going to be a picnic ahead of time. You can bring things. Yes. Okay. And we can eat together before the show. If you have questions, ask Larry. He knows all the details. And one more reminder, um, when sharing your prayer stories and concerns during worship, because of the way we are required to keep confidentiality because of our streaming and Facebook page and things, please uh, limit your names that you give when you ask for prayer to just the first name and last initial? Just the first name. Just the first name of the person for whom you would like to request the prayer or share the joy, just to keep within the guidelines of the confidentiality agreement. Let us quiet our minds now and listen to a very joyful, joyful piece as part of our prelude today.
presence in our worship today be evident. May you open our ears to hear from you and our hearts to receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. that I get somebody. Smaller? No, that's not necessarily it. What? That's that's good. She said one's heavier, one's not. This one's got a bunch of air in it that helps it, right? Now if we have we probably have some really smart people out there that would probably say, you know, because of the density and the composition and la 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 la, right? Well what it comes down to when it comes down to it, this has what it takes. It's got it's what it's made of helps it bounce back better, right? Now here's the thing. Did you know that God can give you the right stuff to bounce back if you're scared or if you're going through something real hard or you're having a change in your life? God is the one that can give you the right stuff, make you have the right stuff in your heart and your mind to Now the thing is, you can choose. You can choose to be the softball that just stays on the ground. Or you can choose to be the basketball that bounces back. And how you do that is you rely on God. You say to God, God, I need you and I want you to give me the right stuff so I can not be so scared I don't want to be scared anymore. And God can do that. Does that make sense? So when it's time to bounce back from something, when you're scared or you're hurt or you're just going through a change and it's hard, ask God. And he can give you what it takes to bounce back. All right? You got any questions? You look like you're really thinking. <laughs> You're going to ask me later? <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for the strength and the courage and everything you give us to bounce back from the troubled times in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. floor. <laughs> All right, so we come to our time of pastoral prayer. Do we have any joys and concerns we would like to share? Remember the privacy. Yes. Uh, I have a joy uh -huh. in the first time back to church that good. Yes. And uh, the cataract surgery has gone quite well. And 
wonderful. And uh, I'm going to You look good. Well, it's been a long month. It, it's been a successful month. <laughs> Prayers. That's for sure. They were, they were yep, I know. <coughs> yes, Gail. Um, there was twelve quadrilateral and four Eastern started celebrating Margaret's birthday yesterday. But I, I, we were just talking about it in Sunday school, that it was, it was really a joyous occasion. And she giggled and smiled, and she really, she may have been overwhelmed by all the people and not remembering everybody, but she just loved it. You could tell. I'm so glad we did that. Maddie? Anything else? Okay. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you on this Father's Day, asking you to remind us of the meaning of love, family, and community in accordance to the divine example of love and relationships you set before us. We need you, God. We need you so very much. Please protect us, comfort us, hold us tightly as we walk through this imperfect world as imperfect humans. We come before you with thankful hearts. We thank you for your love as our creator. We're grateful for how much you value a relationship with us no matter how much we may falter. Thank you for your mercy, forgiveness, compassion, and guidance. Thank you for being patient with us as we strive to become better in our faith and our trust in you. As we learn to reconcile with others and love others as you intend us to. Thank you for support systems and caregivers when we face struggles in our lives. Thank you for new chapters in our lives such as retirements and graduations and new jobs and grandbabies and great grandbabies. Thank you for this church and the time spent serving, fellowshipping, and learning. Thank you for allowing those to come back to church that have been absent for a while. 
Thank you for celebrations of birthdays, especially of those that are turning 102. Thank you so much for visits from family that we haven't seen in a while and connecting with people from our past that we never believed we would have. We also come to you with concerns that are weighing on our hearts and our minds. Lord, hear our prayers today, including those that are silent. We pray for so many that are fighting illness and healing from injury and from surgery. May they receive the best possible care, both medically and compassionately. We pray for those that are facing procedures and tests, unsure of what's to come. We pray for those that are moving or have moved to new homes and even to new states. May you help them with transition by transcending your peace and your wisdom. We pray for those that are trying to hear your voice, voice Lord, so that they can follow the way in which you want them to go. Give them discernment and a heart of obedience and understanding. God of protection, please help those who have no way to get out of the heat of this summer. Please protect. Loving God in a world where there is so much pain and violence, anger, division, sadness. Show us, your disciples, how we can be examples of peace and love that this world so desperately needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let us all pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. hymn of joy today is Faith of Our Fathers in your blue hymnal, number 404, verses 1, 2, and 3. If you can, you can stand if you are able.
being careful to add in accordance with all the other law that my servant Moses commanded me. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of law shall not In May of 1958, he touched me.
pleasure to hear it twice. Encore. What's that? So we need an encore. Encore. Maybe we'll have one at the end. Before I begin my message, please pray with me. Lord, thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that fills this room, and I can really feel it now after that song. The Holy Spirit that fills our hearts. And please let that Spirit open our eyes and our minds and our ears to the message that you intend for us, each as individuals, on this very day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Fear. I told you we were going to talk about fear this week. Fear can come at us in several different ways. Fear's got different levels. It's got different emotions and different physical reactions tied to it. Fear can even cause sadness and depression and anger. In simple terms, fear is basically the body's response to something that we see as harmful or dangerous how we respond physically or even psychologically or both, or how we see it not just maybe harmful and dangerous to us, but to those that we love as well. Almost always, fear brings some level of worry. We begin to think about fear, the situation, the obstacle, the what ifs, whatever it may be. Our human tendency is to want to think about that over and over and over in our minds. We all fear something, and I would venture to guess we all fear more than just one thing. There are times in our lives where we faced obstacles, trials, challenges that we have been so scared to face because they look impossible to overcome. We all know what it's like to be in the dark, either literally or metaphorically, in the dark, so scared to move where, from where we are because we're scared of the pain that we might have if we move forward. See, sometimes we can be so frightened of the future or a task that we have at hand that we become stuck. We do not move beyond where we are because we're scared, even if it is God calling us to do it. Do you remember a couple weeks ago when I said at Pentecost that God doesn't want us in the valley all dried up? God doesn't want us there. And God doesn't want us to be struck with so much fear that we cannot move forward. God doesn't want us to be consumed by fear to the point where it affects our faith. God certainly doesn't want us to be so scared that we cannot live out the calling, the commission, and the will of God and that he has set before us. God wants us to have courage, to live with courage. Now Ben, a few weeks ago, probably been three or four weeks ago, Ben sat up here and said, that fear not, or some way of saying that in the Bible, is said 365 times. When Ben said that, when I listened to the recording, I'm like, wow. I think that's a message that we all need to hear if it's in the Bible 365 times. So, how do we get this courage? How do we not be afraid? Well, let's see what Jesus has to say about being afraid. You go to Matthew 8, 26. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O oh, you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. Faith. So in essence, what Jesus is saying here is in order to decrease our fear, we have to increase our faith. Increase our faith in Jesus, our faith in God, that he's right there. But how do we do this? What I've learned and what I see in scripture 
It teaches us that what we meditate on and think about matters. It literally directs our path, our course of our faith, and the course of our life. In our Joshua reading today, we see God speaking to Joshua. And the situation here is Moses just died. The Israelite leader, Moses, that liberated them from Egypt, got them on their path to the promised land, is no longer there. The leader that they, all those Israelite people, including Joshua, have been relying on for 40 years is no longer with them. Now Joshua was, was Moses' right-hand man during the Exodus and during all this time in the wilderness, but Joshua was never the leader. That was Moses. But now, now God is saying to Joshua, it's your turn. Moses, the servant of the Lord, is no longer here, so your time has come. You have a different mission now. So it's a whole new ballgame for Joshua. So put yourself there. We see God commanding Joshua to lead people, the people that have been wandering in the wilderness for four year, 40 years, sorry, struggling with their own faith, to lead them into the promised land. And not only lead them in there, but then you've got to conquer the people and establish the people that he's leading in their land. That sounds like a huge job to me. Sounds a bit intimidating. Because Moses got them this far, all the way to the edge of the promised land. All the way there, but now it's all on Joshua's shoulders. Get them the rest of the way and establish a nation with all these people, and they say it was millions, all these people who have never been led by Joshua before. Now we read in this narration, if we read it just for the face value, we think to ourselves, I've never been there. I've never been asked to lead somebody, you know, people into a nation, a land and establish a nation. I know I haven't, and probably never will be. But have you ever been asked to do something you weren't sure you were equipped to do? Have you ever felt like you didn't know where to begin on this journey in life or a task that you have at hand because you just lost the person that you love and rely on? Have you ever had a task at hand look so absolutely impossible to accomplish that you were stuck with fear? Have you ever been called by God to do something and you thought, mm -mm, it's not me? Maybe that one, but not me. Have you ever had the weight of the world, or your family, or your friends, or your church on your shoulders to the point where you just were not sure how you were going to handle that? Or asked to step out of your comfort zone, but you didn't know how to do it because you were overwhelmed with fear? Have you ever simply just felt fear? Because when it comes down to it, in this narration of Joshua, what they're trying to get across is Joshua had to be so very scared in this new position, in this task at hand. And God knew this. God knew Joshua was scared. So what did God command? God said, be strong and courageous. Not only one time, Joshua was commanded three different times, be strong and courageous. Three times in that short reading, you see that. And each time this was commanded, then there was a promise given. The first promise was that Joshua and the Israelites would possess the land. The second promise was Joshua would be successful. And the third that God would be with Joshua wherever he may go. 
So why do you think this was commanded three different times in this critical, fearful moment in Joshua's life? I believe what we're supposed to get from this, a message, one of the messages we're supposed to get, is that Joshua needed to hear these words of encouragement multiple times so he could focus on that. So he could focus on that and focus on his source of strength and courage, which is God. The words needed to soak in to Joshua's mind. So faith, faith could take a front seat and fear could take a back seat. The words needed to be what he repeated himself over and over. So then thoughts of everything that could go wrong. Thoughts of the mistakes he could make. Thoughts of the people he had to conquer. So all that could go to the wayside. And what he meditated on was the strength and courage from God. See, the strength and this courage written in this passage is not about strength and battle. It's not about who's the best, who's the most powerful, who might be right. It's not about that. This strength is about having a deeper dependence on God. It's about having faith in God's words and God's promises. It's about having strength of character that goes, that's connected directly to trust in God. It's about walking boldly, knowing that if you are doing the will of God, God will be there right with you. And God will be there with all of those that you love and are asked to care for. Our first and foremost strength needs to come from God, and there is no strength like the strength from God. So God's repetitive words in this reading was an indication that Joshua needed to hear them over and over. So he could live out his faith and by his faith like he had always done, even in this fearful moment. But we also see in the scripture another aspect that teaches us the importance of what we meditate on in our mind matters when it comes to increasing our faith and decreasing our fear. It says in Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. So God is saying, it's not only important to listen to what I'm saying now, Listen to my divine words of strength and courage now, but I also need you to meditate on my word and everything of me for you to overcome your fear. God says in this reading, do not turn right or left. Focus on me. Focus on my will, my words, my conviction. Focus on me, Joshua. Don't look at the obstacles that are in front of you. Don't look at what scares you. Make sure the number one thing that you're seeing that grabs your attention is God and the things of God. So what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? So many thousands of years later, as Christians. So just like Joshua, God knows that we feel fear. God knows our emotions. God knows our mind. God knows our thoughts. God knows that our emotions are directly related to our actions or lack thereof. See, our Creator knows us better than we know ourselves. And God also knows how we are to gain courage to overcome our fears. And just like Joshua, we need to increase our faith. We need to get our courage from our faith in God. We need to meditate on all things of God. And we need to focus on the fact that God is there with us. We need to focus on the word of God. Jesus. We see in John chapter 1, the word became Our second scripture reading today is one of my favorites. It's Philippians 4.8. 
Paul writes, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these. So what we see here is Paul, at this point in his life, has also realized the importance of what we think about and how it matters in our faith walk in our Christian life. And he's sharing it with his dear, dear friends from Philippi. The message in the translation, uh, the translation message, um, says it like this. And I, I liked it, so I wanted to share it. Kind of tones it down. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. This is the part I like. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. So just like Joshua, what we focus on should be what pleases God and the things of God. What we focus on has direct correlation with our emotions, including fear. So as Christians, we are to focus on Jesus and Jesus' commandments, which all lay on. We are to be grateful for salvation and grace and forgiveness we get from Jesus. We are to feed our minds and blessings from God and the promises of God. We are to be rem remember the goodness that we see in our lives from God. And we are to focus on the moral transformation that we're supposed to be going through with the Spirit's convictions. We are to study and apply, and you heard me say this last year, the teachings, the character, and the example Jesus. We are to fill our minds with God and the truth of God. The way, the truth, and the life. Now, sometimes we hear sermons or we go to Bible studies and we're like, yeah, okay. Sounds good. And then you leave and you think, where do I start? So I don't always do this, but I feel compelled, at least in this message, I felt compelled to share some life applications. And these are just things that I have done in the past, or I am doing now, or I have thought about doing, or even researched things that other people have done. So I'm going to share some. You can take time each day to not only read scripture, but to focus and meditate on it, and then see how you may apply it in your life. You can go outside, and this is a beautiful, beautiful day to do this. Go outside and meditate on the Creator's creation. And in doing so, remember God's wisdom and love that we see in that creation. I just did that yesterday morning on my back patio. It took five minutes. I felt God there. You can meditate on goodness in your lives or the lives of others that you've seen by keeping a gratitude journal blessing box. You can join Bible studies, Sunday school, and learn from each other. Because I like to say, Holy Spirit doesn't just talk to and through a preacher. Holy Spirit talks to all of us and we can all learn from each other. You can assure that you pray each and every day. And when doing so, I suggest starting each prayer session with something you are grateful for, even if it's just the birds chirping outside. You can spend time with friends talking about God and how God might be working in your life. I know some people do that now. When you gather with friends, focus on God. You can play or sing worship music in your home or your work or your car if you're allowed to, giving God the praise that God deserves. And last, you can meditate on scripture that reminds you that God is always present. And I will even give you one. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. If you need trouble, if you have trouble meditating on how God is there, I think that's a really good one. 
Now, these are just a few things that I want to share, but here's what I want. I want you, this is your homework already. I want you to encourage each other and share with each other how you find God in your life and how you make God number one so you can overcome these obstacles and these fears that we have. If you want to share them with me, share them with me. You can email, you can come in. I would love to hear them. Because we all battle fear in our lives. We may not share it with everybody, but we all do. Fear is never going to go away, but it can be faced. Fear can be mastered through our practice of faith. And that's what courage is. Fear is not going to go away. You just have to master it and get that strength and courage to put it in the back seat. Our practice and faith and our reliance on God can be strengthened if we focus on God and what he has done, can do, and will do. Just like last week, God wants all of us. I said God wants all of us and all part of our lives, not just on Sunday for sure. So I'll leave you with this. When we begin, when we wake up in the morning, we begin to think right away, consciously. We've been thinking unconsciously. We begin to think right away. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night. So let's start feeding our minds the right things. Let's focus on our God that loves us. And let's think about anything worthy of praise or goodness. Because anything worthy of praise and anything that is good comes from our God in whom we are all called to trust. Thanks be to God.
thank you, Jim. Yeah, we are indeed so blessed. <laughs> that right there was stewardship as well. We are entrusted with gifts, and we share those gifts freely here at Parkway, and you just heard some incredible ones this morning. <laughs> the focus of the elder meditation this week has kind of a twofold purpose. It's Father's Day, of course, and we want to honor and celebrate those who have loved us, led us, guided us, and been mentors in our lives. We honor that, and we know that that is a gift from God for us all. They're not just fathers, but there's love and leadership uh, that has made difference and positive purposes for all of God's children. And we are indeed blessed to have those many, many at Parkway. I always feel like this is a loving family, and there's so many good role models for leadership here. And that we all support one another, we all have things to offer, and we can all offer guidance to one another. I don't want to diminish honoring those wonderful mentors, guides, fathers, grandfathers today. But I do want to bring your attention to something. I came, I came across an article after Mother's Day, and I was actually a little remiss in my reading because we were on vacation. And when I came back, I found an article about brothers and sisters in Christ for whom Mother's Day is not necessarily a happy day. They may have lost a family member. They may have never had a good experience. They may have come from an abusive household. They may have had an absent, um, no, no presence in their life of someone in that role. And I, I read and I learned that there are people who don't attend church on Mother's Day or Father's Day. It's just too painful for them. And I came across this article and I'd like to share with you. Uh, it says, holidays are complicated, especially the ones named after roles. Human relationships are messy, and they include relationships for people who are honored by holidays. For others, Father's Day is joyful, sweet, and remembering, and causes remembering of the times when our role models were there for us, for people who, with whom we've had a positive relationship with a living father figure. Today may it very well include happy phone calls, spreading green cards, and tacky ties for those people. For a lot of people, though, Father's Day brings up feelings of grief, for fathers we've lost, those who couldn't be there or chose not to be there even. Father's Day may bring feelings of sorrow or regret for people who wanted to be fathers and haven't been able to, who haven't been able to know their fathers or to be the fathers that they wanted to be for their kids. Today may be a day of divided loyalties for people who have called more than one person father or dad in the course of their lives. Then there are people of a variety of genders for whom father figures, step parents, and mentors for young people, but often don't get the recognition they deserve. For a lot of people, there is, this is a mix, and nothing is simple. So my hope is that we may be grateful for nurturing that we have received in our lives, from sources both obvious and from sources that are hidden. May God's infinite love and grace heal us from the losses that can be highlighted by mothers by Mother's and Father's Day sometime. That was from Lynn Cox. It was a meditation from a, a, a guidepost that I read. I would like to ask your help today. Parkway is a praying church, and inside your bulletin, there are slips of paper. And I would ask that we have a prayer project, and, and, and on these sheets, there are prayers to honor and lift up.